The government shutdown is almost over. Just hours ago, the Senate approved a stopgap spending bill that will keep the government running, but for less than three weeks. Mola Lange reports for WJZ from Capitol Hill on the compromise and what happens next. If not, the yeas are 81, the nays are 18. The Senate approved a short-term spending bill Monday that will end a three-day shutdown of the federal government. As I've said repeatedly over the past week, shutting down the government is an irresponsible way to do business. Mr. President. The majority of Democrats and nearly all Republican senators voted for the legislation that extends federal spending until February 8th. They reversed their opposition after Republicans agreed to bring a bill to the floor to address dreamers, immigrants brought illegally to the U.S. as children. The Republican majority now has 17 days to prevent the dreamers from being deported. The deal was reached following meetings Sunday and Monday between Republican and Democratic senators. Lawmakers were unable to reach a compromise before a midnight deadline on Friday to avert a shutdown. The House must still vote, but the legislation is expected to pass. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders read a statement from the president. I am pleased that Democrats in Congress have come to their senses. President Trump could sign the bill that will officially end the shutdown as early as this evening. Mola Lange, reporting for WJZ on Capitol Hill. Okay. Thousands of federal employees here in Maryland were affected by the shutdown. Let's check in now with Kimberly Eaton live at Social Security headquarters in Woodlawn with the impact on employees and government services. Kimberly? And Mary, tomorrow morning it's back to work for thousands of Marylanders who are employed by the federal government, but that is only a temporary reprieve with another possible government shutdown already looming. Fort McHenry closed. Social Security, Medicaid offices, even Baltimore's division of ATF operated in limbo for nearly three days. Tweeting, law enforcement services will continue as social media accounts go silent. But come Tuesday, it's back to business as usual. Even that has a timestamp. People uh, feel like uh, they're on a yo yo. Vitold Skierczynski is one of a limited number of Social Security Administration employees who reported to a nearly empty office Monday. The Congress needs to act to make sure that Social Security is fully funded and that the employees can do their jobs. Jobs that will resume as the standoff on Capitol Hill ends. Agencies throughout Maryland reduced to restricted services will reopen with full staffing. The Labor Department says nearly 150,000 Marylanders rely on a federal paycheck. Add in contractors and that number climbs to 300,000 or 10% of the state's workforce. Getting uh, behind on your bills uh, can jeopardize your uh, security clearance. and 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 through no fault of their own because of this stupid shutdown, um, could have their, their very job and their eligibility for their job jeopardized. Because Jackie Simon with the American Federation of Government Employees says many don't know if they will be paying for the hours they clock if the government shuts down again. People are very frustrated. Um, you know, federal employees are pawns in this game. A possibility just three weeks from now when lawmakers face another deadline to vote on a budget. And for now, the government is funded until February 8th. Reporting live in Baltimore County tonight, I'm Kimberly Eaton for WJZ. Kimberly, thank you. Maryland is one of the most government-dependent states with the Fed spending more than $30 billion in procurement 